Hey, what's going on, my friends? This is your boy, Dave Sharp. And uh, today we are going to talk to a stay at home mom who wanted a way out of the middle class cycle. Now, I wonder why she wants out of the middle class cycle. I thought that was the American dream. Emily, welcome to the show. Good morning. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Where are you calling in from? Um, I'm in like, it's called West Olive, Michigan, but really I'm like West Michigan, the Lakeshore, Michigan, outside of Grand Rapids. I got you. Well, that's, um, that's great. Uh, we love our, our Michiganders, Michiganders. Yeah. Michigan. I mean, we love it here, but we really like warmer States better. (laughs) I run, but they just like to travel to Florida. Yeah, I I I'm saying that we love our Michiganders as I'm sitting here in 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 you know the Florida sunshine down here. So come on down, soak some of it exactly. up. We just had a mastermind in Florida, and I I think everybody would agree that the Florida sunshine is worth the travel. So come oh, on yeah. down. Weeks um, beginning of this year, just because my husband does concrete, so it's slow, and we have family down there, and I. Don't know why anyone chooses to live anywhere cold. So tell us why you want out of the middle class cycle um, and explain to us what that is, what that means to you specifically. Okay. I mean, to most people, that sounds, isn't that the same as the American dream? So you tell would- us, tell us your take on that and what, what sort of led you to legendary. Well, um, I feel like me and my husband have kind of always done everything right. My husband is a veteran. He was in the Marine Corps. He got out. Well, thank your family for your service. Thanks. Um, I will tell him. He got out and he tried college. And to be honest, I mean, the view on veterans nowadays and um, just like no respect. And he was like, I don't think anyone has ever worked here. You know, I worked since I was 12 and he was... He was like, I just can't do this. So he started concrete, which is hard work. He was working 80 hours a week. I went to college. I got a degree. I'm a recreational therapist. I work with kids that have severe disabilities in the pool. And mm. um, yeah, we just, we worked. We both got great jobs. And yet somehow it was still tight all the time. And I just like. Money, no one, right? Yeah. No one ever told you that. They're like get a job. Everything's going to be great. In reality, it's like, yeah, are we blessed? I mean, I'm never going to not be thankful, but yeah. when you're stressed constantly about making ends meet, when you're doing all the right things, something feels wrong. Yeah. There's nothing noble in being poor um, mm-hmm. and, or, or moral in being poor. And I love that coming from somebody who, who has, I mean, look, it's 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 like uh, you know sometimes i also look at my children and i look at i look around and and i and i say yeah i'm i i'm grateful i'm grateful for what i have if i had no money zero money i'm grateful for what i have um but there's nothing wrong there's nothing and we have to break this stigma of poverty being noble you know, like in, and, and I think I even see it when, when, when I go to give somebody a tip and they don't want it or they don't take it. Now that doesn't happen a lot, but you know, yeah. it's almost like, no, I can't accept that. Um, I, I don't know if it doesn't sound like you guys had that issue. And that's why I'm pointed out because you, your husband came out, he got a job, he looked around, he said, I'm not going to stick around in this forever. And if you have stuck around in a job forever, doesn't mean you're a bad person. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. But he went out and started his entrepreneurial journey. Yeah. Sounds like. And, and, you know, you're doing one a week. You're a stay at home mom. But this is a little bit of your entrepreneurial journey because you also want to contribute and be a part of yes. not just taking care of the kids, right, mom, but also contributing, being productive. My wife's like that as well and helping out yeah. with income and do, you'll do anything you got to do for your home and for your family, right? Yeah, that is very true. I mean, really, it started for us kind of during COVID because my husband was not, 
essential. And so him and I were stuck at home for eight weeks. And for us, it felt like we didn't have any control. And I've worked since I was 12 years old. My husband's always worked. And I was like, this is crazy. Like, there's no way that we can both be home. Now, mind you, we liked being home and we were kind of like, how do we make money and be able to like. Exactly. Thank you. Nothing wrong with being home. Just can't be home if if, if you ain't going to keep the home. If no money is not coming in. Like be at home, but still have groceries and those things. And so that's when he actually started his company. His company is less than two years old. Um, And then I kind of was just like, honestly, when I saw Legendary, I kind of started it under the guise of like, oh, I know the power of an email list. I should do this for his company. And then realistically, it was like, no, I want to do this for myself. And I I see the value in this. So let's just go for it. Mm. Yeah. So, so what, what, what has, I mean, you're a, you're a physical therapist is kind of the category, right? Even though you have a niche specialty with disabled children, you work with them in the, in the pool, you're a physical therapist, right? Recreational therapist, but recreational therapist play versus the strength. So, okay. What is it okay for a professional like yourself and for any other professional out there to come into the online world? Is that okay? I think a lot of people feel like I'm going into some dark world and you know, I'm going from what I'm supposed to be doing over here, which is following my path and keeping my job. And even if I keep my job and I'm still doing this over here, is this over here? Okay. This internet marketing stuff, is it weird? Is it a scam? Am I like, you understand? Can you talk to people who also are professionals or or who may be weary that, oh gosh, now I'm going over into no man's land over here on the internet and I'm venturing into it almost like we're going into some sort of a bad neighborhood or doing something wrong. Can you show how, can you talk about how you view internet marketing? Is it something, is it a legitimate career for you now? Do you see it being an actual career path or is it just a hobby? Talk to us a little bit about from the, from a professional's perspective, doing something like this. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing um, for me is that I perform better now doing something where I am passionate about where I feel like it is my, my own thing. Um, I was nervous at first, but honestly, I feel like, yes, that the online world is very different than being in my practice with my clients. Um, but I also feel like there is this connection piece being a professional and being someone like that wants to connect with other people. I didn't think I was going to get that online, but I do mm-hmm. feel like I am vulnerable. And that's one of my biggest things is I put it all out there And you find Mm. people that completely relate to that and want the same things. And so I honestly, everything that I do, I can move that into my professional. It kind of goes back and forth, if that makes sense. Like I do better at my job now because I have something where I feel confident and I feel passionate about. And you lose that sometimes for profession and to know like, okay, like I can feel good about something again. And that's really exciting. And that makes everything else more exciting. Right. I, I really do understand that. Also, I would imagine, um, man, it'd be hard. It'd be like for me, selling information is I can push that aggressively. You know what I mean? But man, marketing to parents families with disabled children i don't know if they reach out to you or you reach out, but gosh like how you gotta sensitively grow that business you 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 you, yeah. you know you gotta and so i can imagine having an extra income would help me be more present with those clients because they're not my only source of income and i'm not solely relying on that work 
to pay my bills. That that's just something that I'm guessing. Does that does that ever come yeah. up where this work becomes more passion work with your clients and it's not about the money? Whereas over here, you either already are or you see in the near future with your online business being able to replace income and make uh, obviously even more. And then you get to decide, do I still want to work with with my clients that I've worked with in the pool? Um, and, and if so, now I would imagine you're you are either there or fantasizing about the day that you really can um, you really can run that 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 recreational therapist business like you want to run it and, and or scale it or grow it or do do something else. But it's not but the other problem with being a in, in we all read about it in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, being a self-employed person is the challenge with that is still if you don't show up and do a lesson, you don't get paid. So you may own the business. You may own whatever you are, doctor, therapist, incorporated or whatever. But you're if you don't show up and yeah. do a session, you don't get paid. And that is the other very big difference um, it's the different, your husband may be running into that challenge. It's kind of like, yeah. how does he get himself off the job? Um, so the internet is also in, in the business models we teach are really, really fairly quick to get into a position to where they run 24 seven and they are, they are, they are making things happen even when you're not standing over them, which does oh. not exist in your recreational business. Even yeah. when you're planning, taking emails, all that kind of stuff, you're not getting paid. You no. only get paid for the time in the pool, right? Or at the yes. appointment. A hundred percent. And to be honest, I work with busy families and I also work with kids that get sick very often. And so my oh. whole thing has changed dramatically, but that's exactly it. I can only see so many clients in a day and I can only do so many sessions in a week and a month. And to be honest, right now where I've kind of moved to is the, the clients that I've kept, I've had for years and years and years since they were two years old. Um, but other than that, when you are constantly feeling like you're trying to survive and not thrive and you're in a job where you are giving so much of yourself, I mean, Truly, I connect when I'm in a session with a kid. I have to be fully there. It's totally. hard to be there when you are wondering about like, um, what am what are we gonna pay tomorrow? Or uh, yeah. I need to get more clients. But right. like right now, I come home and I try to show this a lot because I think this is a big thing with affiliate marketing and just online marketing is I fill it in my little gaps throughout the day. And yeah. something you can't do with anything else. Because if you're doing that with other jobs, a lot of times you're like, you forget where you're at, or it takes you another extra hour to remember where you're at and start again. And with yeah. this, it's like, it's running. I can check in. I can do something for 10 minutes. I can come back to it. My clients, I can't do that. I am there for an hour. Right. Nothing else can happen. And yeah. so... I've really found that, yeah, it completely is passion work for me, but that does not pay off. And will I ever leave that? No, because I love it. Right. But something's got to shift there for me. Yeah, and, and you're doing something about it. Legendary kind of showed me is I can work with a lot of kids, but I can only see so many in a day. But it really opened my eyes to like, whoa, there are kids all over the country right. that there's this online space that is there 24 seven. And if you really work hard, you can make it work in any, in any setting, really. Yeah. So I've kind of like started even just with starting with you guys thought about different things. Like my wheels are turning, like where yeah. can I here and here? Um, and just kind of like just the logistics of like, you can make this work in any setting, any setting. 
and you know it's it's even as a as a um as a a, a recreational therapist do, ha, did you use any digital tools for them to watch or use when they were home or anything else before yes yeah, so um a lot of my kids are actually nonverbal and do not have gross or fine motor movement so they are pretty much no. um bed bound and since Obviously, COVID happened. We couldn't go in there. So I started, I was one of the only therapists in Michigan that did this, but I started creating videos and I yeah. would put on YouTube and they would be yeah. like guided imagery videos. And a lot of parents were like, can you please send this to so-and-so? My friend who has a son at home, can you please send this? And so really I wasn't getting paid, but I was working a lot because I was creating a lot of videos wow. and that kind of like piqued my interest of like, okay, like we need to be prepared for the future. Or there's a lot of kids that are home where yeah. I can get to the masses by doing online, you know, kids that aren't getting reached. Yeah. And that's, that's where I was going. And, yeah. you know, just, just even if, you know, even if it's not, even if you're just testing at first, and that really is what everything is, is just testing. By the way, none of us know how anything's going to turn out when we try a marketing test, just so all of you know. Um, yeah, so everything's a test. Um, but even if you, even if you um, took videos and just began to build a, a YouTube channel or, or, you know, even a membership site, um, because that, that would really, you know, and, and now all of a sudden for, you know, there's just so many different things you could do. Obviously you could offer it for free if your other business is taking off or, or you could, there's so many different things you can do. We're not here to brainstorm that, but I just <laughs> love that. I just love that that is is something that even that fits into this we can apply these skills sure you want to take off with affiliate marketing sure you want to grow that and there's so many things that you probably see you can do but just over here with your existing business almost every existing business job or knowledge that you have can be packaged and sold packaged and marketed packaged and offered for free as a lead magnet or free giveaway for something that you are selling and every industry every profession has that every category in which knowledge is required or needed whether it's um i love this the recreational therapy for disabled children get out of here i mean talk about a niche under a niche under a niche that is specific um, yeah. and, and, and your, your, your husband with his concrete, I mean, there's so many you nowadays people are, you know, before they call a local business, before they call Mr. Local concrete or plumber, they actually go a lot of them anyways, go on to Google first uh -huh. of all, and they do their own research and they see who's around town that's worth giving a call to. Um, and, and, and a lot of them will also go on to YouTube and they'll do their own yeah. research. And oh, what if a client in your neighbor or in your town came across your video on YouTube? Because you, so even th these, these skills apply to every profession. They, they, every restaurant, every contractor should be building an email list and yeah. marketing. I, I use cannot... the funnels. Like I got that started and I started to learn that. And I actually implemented it first with my husband's business. Yeah. And it's awesome because I'll just like send out, you know, an email of like keeping them on the email list. And I think okay. this is a big thing for like being a part of legendary too. Like I, I don't remember who said it. Um, but like if you're in someone's email list a year down the road, they might be like, Hey, like we're tight. I remember that email that I got about making money online. They're going to go there to look at that first. Mm -hmm. And so I just find that really interesting. And we've had that too with, with the brick and mortar, with the concrete. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to like the topic that you touch on, like niching down. I think people get really afraid of that. And I was afraid of that at first, like, 
am I going to be too specific when I started? Mm. And I've just felt like the more that you niche down, like the more you find your target audience, that's so important because you can go viral all you want. But if you're full of people that really are not there for that, you're honestly hurting yourself because then you're not getting any, you're not getting any audience to respond to you. So I just like, I think that's a really important point is don't be afraid to like hone in on who you want, who is that target person? Cause I was my target person. So when you're, when you're creating content and you're, you're working in the make money online niche right now, creating and, and, and creating content about becoming financially free, making more money, you know, how, you know, being poor is not noble. A lot of the things that we've been talking about, you know, just financial yeah. literacy education, you know, different, different making money online ideas and, and, um, how are, what are some examples of you niching down or being specific on that channel or on that page? Is there a specific type of person that you're talking to? What type of stories are you telling? Are you telling stories that are going to attract a specific type of person? Yeah, I mean, I'll say when I started, when I first started, I think it was kind of, it was easy for me to be like, okay, what videos are out there in the you can make money remotely that I could try to do and figure out and try it on my own and make those. I had one, I was struggling to get a hundred followers on TikTok, and I had one video that's now sitting close to 500,000, which was wild. Um, and what I realized from that though, is those are not my target people. So I took a step back and I was like, as much as you want to this to be a sprint, it's a marathon. And no matter if you have a hundred viewers versus a hundred thousand viewers, you need those to be specific. So I said, who is your target audience? I am the mom who wants to be at home, but needs to needs extra income. And it's so taboo to talk about. And I make people so uncomfortable with it sometimes being like, yeah, man, like we struggled this past month. It sucked. And people are like, whoa we aren't like that. And I'm like, okay, well, 99% of America is. So yeah, yeah. throw that. There. So really just being open and honest and vulnerable and sharing that online really, I think resonated with people mm. and saying like, it's okay. That, like it's hard sometimes to pay X, Y, and Z, or we can't go on vacations. You know, we can't go on vacations. Um, we have, we also during COVID our daughter, um, got a medical diagnosis and we do MRIs every three months and on a blue collar medical insurance plan, that's very expensive, tens of thousands of dollars. And I think that resonates with people, medical insurance, health insurance, medical bills, everyone deals with that. Yeah, and why it? So I think, I think really hitting the pain points as we've talked about before, but not just saying pain points, relating them yeah. to your story. And then also I found like showing the hopeful side of it too, showing the positive. It's been, I've been in this for less than two months and I feel like I'm doing pretty good with it, but sharing like, Hey, we just went and loaded up at Costco because of this side hustle, the little things like not the extravagant, which hopefully I'll have that to share. But literally being like, I can go to Costco. I can go on a date night with my husband because of this opportunity. I think that's what people want to see. Oh. For no, some it was, reason. It was, it oh, was <clears throat> well, that's, that's what people relate to. And I've been saying that and also practicing that now for, for several years. Um as I sit in front of this camera with a very blank wall behind me and, and a very, I mean, pictures are sitting on the floor. It's just very, because it doesn't matter. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares. People care that you're here every day. People care about what you have to say, but they don't care where you say it from. They don't even care how, I mean, your delivery, but like they don't care about much else. The more, the more real it is the more relatable it is. 
Um, one of my favorite stories was a pair of brothers who made money and took their parents out to dinner. Everybody's always looking. Everybody, the one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest uh, mindset, you know, challenges, and you could call it limiting beliefs. But I, I think it's just a legitimate. Like people don't know how to get around it, especially if you're in the make money online space, right? Or you're going into a niche for the very first time and you don't have results in that niche. How do you position yourself as somebody worthy of listening to? You've gave us some context there and, and talked to us a little bit about, about how you do it. Um, but say more about that specifically. And, and what would you say to people? Did you struggle with that? D do you still have that thought in your head? Or have you completely, as you just described, found a way of viewing this, found a strategy a messaging strategy and a content strategy that allows you to talk about your real life um, w without feeling inauthentic. But um, a yeah. lot of people feel like they need to have big results or some results making money, et cetera, before yeah. they can work inside of this niche and, and, and talk about financial literacy and talk about these topics and yeah, promote so these products. That, um, like, yesterday and honestly I just said you know I thought of that that at the beginning too because I'm gonna be authentic and I'm not gonna lie and I'm not gonna say things that are not um truthful you know and so I was like I just wonder like you know you see videos out there and it makes people skeptical on any anything out there and I I really went into it saying like I'm going to be honest on this is what I want. I've never been bold enough to say this is what I want. This month, I want a four-figure month for me. And that that for me was a big thing. Of And I don't think people want to say that because they're like, well, what if it doesn't happen? You're right. If it doesn't happen, I will be transparent in the next video and say, guess what? Didn't happen this month. Going to happen next month. So I right. think that's really important. And I... I really think too, there's so much to talk about. Honestly, yeah. I talk about like, what would it look like to stay in the life that I'm in now? Well, that medical debt is drowning. You know, it feels like you're drowning. I want to be able to go get a second opinion for my daughter, you know? Yeah. So it's like, I talk, I talk about what, what would change in our life if we are able to become financially free. I also talk a lot about budgeting and how important that is. And no matter how much money you have, if you don't budget, you're not going to do anything with it anyways. So I think that's important. And another thing too is I just think um, like the knowledge piece of it. You know, someone asked yeah. me one of my, like, is this recession proof and things like that? And I'm like, well, education is actually the one of the number one recession proof things. And all I'm providing you is a way to become more educated. Yeah. Well, um, I don't know what's recession proof folks, because yeah, sure. This is going to be a question that's going to start coming up. Um, <laughs> we've got a lot of, we've got a lot of, these are all just excuses usually. And this is one of the things that we have to be honest with people about is that you can come up with any excuse that you want about your limitations or the world around you and how it's not going to be possible for you to do something because of whatever is happening. But um, there are people still making and shipping shit out of Ukraine. Okay. And they're yeah. in the middle of war. So I'm going to tell you something on planet earth. Anything is possible. <laughs> yes. and, uh, you know, um, yeah, you know, I, I love that attitude. It's just kind of like, you know, I'm going to tell you what I'm working for. I'm going to tell you what my goals are, um, and, and I'll be transparent whether I hit them or not. I saw this just in a, in a completely different niche. One of, my, one of my buddies or somebody who I've become friends with online started a clothing brand, real nice, high-end stuff. He lives in L.A. He's got experience uh, doing it, and he... Uh, he's rich. He's a guy who's designed a lot of jewelry and a lot of clothing. He's rich. And he did, um, uh, he did, um, a one year anniversary hoodie drop 
and he had 200 to sell. There were 500 a piece. All right, five hundred dollars for this hoodie. It was yeah. it was a it was a ni nice hoodie and high end. You know, he's trying <laughs> yeah. to go, he's trying to go into the Gucci, you know, Louis yeah. sort of realm. You know, but anyways, um, yeah, he's got a big following on Instagram. I mean, and he was even going to give away a Rolex, right? If he sold all two hundred, and. Like even me, I don't need another watch. Like honestly, I I've had an addiction to watches for a long time. I don't need another watch. Um, yeah. But I was like, oh shit, maybe I'll win the watch. You know what I mean? Like if he yeah. sells out all two hundred, I shit, I'm I got a chance to win the watch, right? That's pretty cool. <laughs> Half a percent of chance, right? And yeah. you know what? He even extended the contest. He even extended because he didn't sell out within 24 hours. He extended the contest to 48 hours to sell out. Guess what? He still didn't sell out. And all of this happened right on his Instagram, right in front of the public. And you know what he did? He just he just shifted once again and said, hey, we didn't sell out. I'm going to give the Rolex every single person that bought a hoodie. I'm going to do a Rolex giveaway at the end of the year. So I'm still giving this watch away, but I'm yeah. going to move it to the end of the year. And he just adjusted. He just, he was honest. He said, I didn't sell out. It wasn't a big deal. He adjusted, said, I'm going to give the watch away. Every order is a submission and I'll, I'll draw a winner at the end of the year. Exactly. And he just adjusted. He just, he just didn't hit his goal, but I still, the way I looked at it as somebody who is watching total consumer, total onlooker. I said, this guy's got cojones. This guy's awesome. This yeah. guy's honest is what I was saying. This guy's not bullshitting because I know if he tells me he didn't hit his goal, this is a straight up guy. And I actually really appreciated that. And I actually, on like a lot of my comments that people are like, you know, people want to comment whatever they want to comment. And before I let that bother me, but I've kind of said, well, no one's paying my own bills and I'm just going to keep, you know, I'm committed to this. And honestly, every time that I directly respond, whether it's a video and I said, hey, you know, like what have you tried it and has it not worked? Do you feel like, you know, every single time the response is always, hey, thanks for responding. Yeah, that's exactly what I meant. Or I mean, nine times out of 10, the respond is like, hey, you know what? I appreciate you actually like hitting that head on. And it's like, it takes that like, oh no, someone said something. Now I don't feel that. Cause when I see that, I'm like, okay, like they want to know more about it or they're skeptical. Right. And I answer that. That was hard at the beginning for me, but yeah. now I've done it and just like been super honest about it and realize the response is way better when you do that. I encourage yeah. everyone. Well, look at how athletes after a, a game loss, like you can learn a lot from press conferences. Like how, what is the right, how, what are some of the things you can say and attitudes you can have if you failed that still get people rooting for you? Yeah. And I want to break it down so everybody knows what I'm talking about. Watch a the NBA playoffs are happening right now. Watch the press conferences because they're little mini bite-sized pieces of content. And what you'll see from the players of the losing team is you'll see a lot of humility. You'll just see we I, we didn't do a good enough job. We just we could have done better. We didn't do a good enough. They don't get up there and try to hide in bullshit. They just say we didn't do a good enough job. That we didn't hit our goal. We're, yeah. We need yeah. to do better tomorrow. We're going to do better. This is not, you know, this is not good enough. That well, I'm not happy with this, but yeah. but we didn't. But we didn't win. We didn't win. They they outplayed us, and we need to come back with more attitude tomorrow if we want to beat this team. It's not, hey, yeah, we. So what? We didn't win. We still played good, didn't we? We. I mean, come on. Like, didn't you see that dunk? There's none of that defensive. Like, let's no. They just deal with our humble and own what happened in the game and just have a, you know, a good attitude about moving forward. And 
as entrepreneurs, we we can view ourselves as professional athletes of entrepreneurship. And it's okay to get out there on the field and go and set goals and talk about goals and anything. People want to see. I mean, we yeah. are the we are the 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 Olympians of life. We're the entrepreneurs. We're the people that are going out there taking the risk, putting our money on the line, putting our children in harm's way. Seriously, when we go out there and we put ourselves out there on the internet for everybody to see, that's putting all, it on the line. And people people like that. People want to see that. We are the Olympians. And it's okay to go out there for all of us and leave it on the field. And then in the press conference after, if we didn't hit our goal, talk about it, own it. People don't care about the goal. They just want to watch the game. Do you agree? Yeah. I I get a lot of people too where like they don't want you to know everything. Like I'll be honest and like I get emails sometimes and I'm like, I don't know the answer to that. Let me check with some other people and I'll get back to you. And that always too is like really respectful too. I mean, I use the um the Facebook page. I've been using that a lot lately. Like, hey, does anyone know the answer to this? And it's just because I don't want to give them BS. I want them yeah. to know like, oh no, you have a question. I don't know it, but I'll figure it out for you. And I think yeah. that gives more encouragement too, as I'm like, oh, well, she can figure it out. I can probably figure it out too. Yeah. I, I love saying, I don't know. And I love, I yeah. love, I love, well, I mean, it's the most, it's the, it's the most, it's a tool in your toolbox. You know, it's a tool in your toolbox. It's it's no one should feel pressure to ever talk to another human being that that you ever need to perform or you ever need to have the answer for somebody. I mean, this is something that we just weren't taught enough in school about self-esteem and, and about, you know, we, we all grew up uh, with a lot of of, of kind of previous generations. That's just like, you know, kind of fake it till you make it. And I think a lot of them were surviving, you know, but now we know that we're, we're mostly safe unless a crazy dictator invades our country. And we don't have to, we don't have to be so afraid of people. You know, if they ask us a question and we don't know the answer, one of the most noble and probably the thing that is going to get them to buy from you is for you to just be unbelievably honest. You should always be honest and just say exactly what you just did, Emily. I don't know. And the reason why I love I don't know is because I don't want a single person to look at me as I have all the answers. That's way too much pressure. I want to get on the internet. I want to yeah. clown around a little bit. I want to I want to create a little content. I want to do my best, but I don't want to make it seem as if I have all the answers. I want to empower people and instill confidence for them to buy the product. The other big tip here for marketers is the product has to have all the answers. So if you're constantly yeah. creating content that's like, I have all the answers in trying to position yourself as the person with all the answers, well, why the hell do they need to buy the product? So yeah. we the product needs to constantly be the thing with the answers. And we as the, if we're doing affiliate marketing, or even if we're creating our own course, we need to basically, in a respectful way, say those answers are in the training. That's, that's exactly. why I create. That's why it's created it. And and I'm sorry. I had a guy that I really like. Maybe he's watching this. He emailed me the other day because he was on Wake Up Legendary and he asked for a phone call. And as much as I want to talk to people, and as much as I want to please this particular person. I have to guard my time and I have to say, I prefer email or what is the call about? And I can prepare for it, but I don't have time to just jump on the phone for 20 minutes anytime throughout the day. Cause I got kids, family, everything. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what's coming up for you as I, as I say the, 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 as I talk about this and it's just kind of piggybacking on what you've already said, but not needing to know the answers and pointing towards the training or even a sales video or webinar or whatever you're promoting to sell the product point towards that yeah. for the thing with the answers, never yourself 
it's no fun to be the expert of experts because then you also put pressure on yourself that you can never fail. Do you agree with what I'm saying? And yeah, I'm practicing this for that. Is someone asked me the other day, well, how did you get your systems running? And I had this like pressure of being like, well, I guess I could go. Like, I know there's a bunch of YouTube videos telling you exactly how to do a Weber click funnels. I'm not there yet because I don't have that time commitment yet to learn it fully other than what I've learned through the course. So my right. video was very, you don't need any more. I've not exactly learned it any more than what's in the course either. I don't know all the little bells and whistles on the <laughs> damn thing. I mean, to be honest. <laughs> and my video was literally, I was like, honestly, I don't have time. And I don't, I don't know what to tell you other than take the course. Cause that's the only way that I know how to do it. And she literally messaged me the day after. She's like, you're so right. I've been asking numerous people to explain to me how to do it. She was like, but why don't I just take the course and then I don't really know how to do it? I'm like, yeah, it's copy paste. And she was like, why do we make life so much harder? I like, don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I've been trying to, and it, and the more people I meet and the more people that I see and I ask them, what did you do? What did you do? Did, did Matt have a secret call with you and reach out and do everything for you? Did he fly out to you? Did it, did I, and I don't know about it. What did you have? So, and they just say, you know what? No, I didn't. I just went through the training, you know, yeah. and I just, I just learned it for myself. Yeah. I just learned it on my own because I don't know if Tom, Dick or Harry over here that I met in the Facebook group actually has my best intentions in mind. I mean, Folks, yeah. did you buy a tra are you buying a training from me or are you buying a training from Tom, Dick, or Harry that you met in our Facebook group who's then going to try to pitch you some $5,000 coaching program that you don't need? Folks, buy the training, go through the training. There's no secrets except this one. Ready? I have to rewrite. Yep. The, here's the secret. The people who are succeeding simply went through the training and the people who are struggling or lost some of them even bought the training, but here's the key. Wait for it. They didn't go through it. They didn't mm -hmm. go through it. Yeah. And, and, and I know that because, and I know I'm harping on this and I'm going to let it go eventually. Maybe, maybe not, but we just had a mastermind in Orlando and every single person who is lost in the room, owned the blueprints, hadn't gone through them. And I'm telling you, the, 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 you know, it's like, it's like your goals, you know, the things that you want to achieve are on the other side of just a little bit of focus and a little bit of effort. And instead it is so hard to constantly be asking a bunch of people how to do something. It's not the way it's, it's not the, the way when I need a contractor, when I need somebody in life, I don't go on Facebook and say, Hey, anybody know? Cause they, you know, they're all going to send me their brothers, brothers, mm -hmm. wife's nephew. Who's going to come <laughs> over like Beverly hillbillies. I mean, I, I do my own research. You know, yeah. I want to talk to people. I want them to come out to my house. So folks, if you want to be successful, you got to take your daily just the shit in your life and do it yourself. Stop trying to get somebody else to do it for you. And you're right, Emily. That is one of the most common things that I see too is just people trying to get somebody else to do it for them. And there's also this big false belief that in order to be successful, you need a mentor. And I'm going to tell you something. There's a difference between a direct and an indirect mentor. In all my life to get to where I got, I used indirect mentors, meaning that I watched videos and I listened to tapes and audios and CDs. I did not have direct access to high-level people to sit down and show me anything. It is possible. You all do not need to go hire an additional coach who you pay thousands of dollars to set shit up for you. You yeah. just, you don't need to do it. If you want to know how to do this correctly and you can afford the blueprints, get them and go through them. If you can't, then you know what? Guess what? You're stuck in a situation to where you need to 
figure it out and be resourceful if you don't have the resources. And you know what? Somebody needs to say that. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to say that in this industry, that it's not just come in and it's, oh, we'll do it all for you and you just need the right mentor and all this, because this is all the stuff. And look, I'm not saying that we don't, we can't use each other as long distance mentors and we can't learn from each other, but stop making people your gurus and, ex and expecting that if you find the perfect person, they're going to help you set it up perfectly and, and launch you into the stratosphere yeah. that they're going to take your money and run, do it yourself, get educated Go through the training, hear it with your own ears and your own eyes. Don't take because here's the other thing that happens, Emily. When it gets tr when it when it goes through somebody else, they always screw it up. Sit yeah. in a circle and whisper something in somebody's ears and see what it comes back to you as with just four or five people in the circle. It always gets, you know, watered down or changed once it goes through other people. I was going to say, too, remember that you can go back. You always have it. Like, I would sit there sometimes, like, so frustrated because I was not getting, like, one thing working right. And I would, like, just get so frustrated. And then I would go back and watch one little piece of a video. And I was like, they tell you how to do it right there. Like, why was I so, like, no, I, I soaked all that in. You're not going to soak it all in. Like, that's why you have it. So, it's like, re-go through all of that stuff as much as you need it. That's your yeah. answer. Wait on someone else to give you your answers. Take the time. Go through the information again. If I came on this this live stream every morning and I was like, oh, you know, buy my crypto course or I was like, oh, buy my cooking course or whatever or buy my gambling course. I'm going to show you how to count cards and win. Look, I'm the worst at those things. I would I would lose all your money gambling crypto would have pick all the wrong picks burn your dinner. There's like one or two things that I know how to do really well. One of them's market online specifically with affiliate marketing. And that course has hundreds of millions of dollars in sales worth of strategies, copy examples, funnel examples exactly how I view and think. And there's a difference between people who can do and people who can also do and teach. And all of you, if you've bought that course and you haven't gone through it, God, you're doing yourself a disservice. And if you're on the fence, consider it. it, it you know, you hear it every morning and there's such a common question. Did she buy the blueprints? Did, yeah, you know, these every person that I talk to who has the resources and who wants to be serious about this has bought the blueprints and they've likely bought other stuff as well. It's not just, you know, these are people that are constantly investing in their education themselves because they realize to get out of the place they're in, they need yeah. new knowledge and new skills. Yeah, I right? completely agree with that. I mean, I think once you really get into it and you're excited about it, like I'm already like, what else, what's the next event? And just because I enjoy it, I thoroughly enjoy it. And I relate with a lot of people that are doing it. And for me, it's like, it's a long game. It's not a short game. So like, you know, there are so many opportunities to keep learning and to keep growing. And I'm not going to grow unless I learn and really do the work myself. And I've seen that a ton, like just all around work on every aspect of it and it will grow. It is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Mm -hmm. This is so true. Fall in love with the process, you know, fall in yeah. love with the process. I said that yesterday, fall in love with the process, because if you think about Michael Jordan or any of these other athletes, man, they miss the game. That's why they went back. And, and there's something special about being in this game. And you know what I'm talking about? You, you're, you're in business. There's a certain excitement about it. You're getting engagement. Right. People are opting in. They're buying. You, 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 you can feel that you're on the, the brink of something big with this business as you're, as you're growing it and it's kind of picking up steam. It's exciting. So it's if, if it's not exciting to you and you're sitting on the sidelines, we understand why it's not exciting not as exciting on the sidelines as it is on the field in the game. So get in the game. Uh, Emily, 
Thanks for your time. I know your kids are at your neighbors or whatever, so I want to be respectful of your time. And hopefully this was worth your time today. I know it was certainly worth our time. All right. Well, tell your husband we also say, said hello. And um, you guys keep up the great work, and we'll see you in Florida sometime soon, okay? Definitely. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. See you, Emily. All right, my friends. Go and follow Emily uh, on TikTok at M. E M the D M M M the E M T H E D M M M the D M M. Um, and then she's M the affiliate uh, over on, and that's just her, that's just her, 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 uh, her handles or her, her, uh, uh, you know, what you type into Instagram and TikTok. you know what the hell I'm talking about for Christmas sakes. All right, my friends, you guys have a fantastic gals dogs, cats, and everyone and everything in between who's, you know, tuning into the show. I know some of you are tuning in with your dogs and cats and hamsters and rabbits. They're all welcome. Hopefully they're learning something. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode of Wake Up Legendary and my friends. Uh, if nobody told you today, you are amazing and have unlimited potential that you have not tapped into yet. And I'm so excited to hear and see what happens when you do. So keep on going. Don't give up on this journey. This is not about giving up on this business. It's about don't give up on yourself, okay? Uh, this is an opportunity to, yes, earn money, but also build yourself up and step into your full potential. To me, that's an exciting, exciting goal. Way more exciting than making a bunch of money, right? Because... You know, I know what I can do with money. I, I We talked about a lot of it today. But man, um, what's cool, and if we want to keep it related to money, if I step in and become the best version of myself, imagine how much more money I could make, you know? Um, and, and just, man, that to me is, is exciting. So stay in the game. Stay on the field. If you need to step off the field for a moment, get some water, catch your breath, but don't stay off for too long. Don't go on the injured reserve list and not come back. Don't go in the marketer protection program where we don't hear from you for you. Stay in the game. Let the momentum pick up. It will. It will. Don't quit before the miracle happens. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode. Get out of here. Peace.